look at those pictures that I had brought to uh, Andy uh, for you guys to take a look at if you have any questions. But all we're asking is for a lease, possibly a 10-year lease for so much, for them to be able to put a couple of storage buildings or a dog pen, nothing permanent, because it would still belong to the city. And uh, to be able to just let them have access for use of that. Because when you go back, there's a tree line, and it drops off down into all the, the creek and the wet area down from the children's act, uh, I mean the child development center. So. They would keep it mowed if they did. They would maintain the property, absolutely. Because it's up on a hill, and, and city workers wouldn't even have to come up the hill anymore. They just take care of all that was right below. So we don't have to mow. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's just one little lot. Let me. Uh, you know what, Andy? Are you ready to do this one? Second one up. Yeah, the second one up right there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And how, how large is that? It's, it's 42, by, 42 feet wide by 72 feet. The, the strip that I'm asking you guys to lease to these folks. A possible, possible lease, Mr. White. Possible lease. <laughs> And I know Andy wasn't sure of the legalities, and we knew that you wouldn't want to sell, but we d would like to at least consider a possible lease on it to these folks. They are 78 and 82 years, uh, 83 years old, excuse me, and are moving into town to find a little closer into town. Right there. Uh, all of that. Behind all those houses is Child Development Center, the park, and all that down there. But on the all very the corner, they look like a building or a I don't know. That's city property. You've got right there. <laughs> I know. That's, that's for you to find out. I don't know. City property. you know what? Is it the uh, one there? That the corner up there. Like a shed or something. Red, I didn't look at all the buildings around it. Actually, I think there's some probably some encroachment from other places, but as a, a real estate agent, I'm not going to let someone buy something and encroach on city property with my knowledge of it. No, I, was, I thought he was talking about one block down. I'm not familiar with that one. I don't know what's on it. Oh, well. That ain't part of it. Which one is it, Ray? Second one up. Second one up. Second one works as street. Okay. No, it looks like a little building. Too. Yeah, okay, so whoever. Yeah. They say they mow it because <clears> the, <throat> the lady that is selling the property uh, has not actually moved out, but she said there's a. I mean, there's a, a rebar stake there, and she said the city maintains up to that, and I'm not exaggerating. It's as close as, closer to the Oregon. So. Yeah, there's storage. We've been, we've been, as long as I can remember, we've always kind of mowed that because it runs parallel with Hawkins Spring. Yeah. Up through there, and I, I know the little stake you're talking about. Yeah. There, so. so, I mean, that 32 by 72 strip right. that they would maintain just to put movable, building or fence on. Well, does that move the line all the way back to the drop off the blood that you're talking Yes, about? it would go to the tree line. Right. It doesn't drop off, it just would go in, you know, to the tree line that immediately <laughs> drops what off. What would we do about mowing the rest of that up through there? Well, I, I mean, I would say, well, there's, it, it's easy access to get to it. I mean, I wouldn't think there'd be any trouble. Red, the way that property is lined out, the fence lines here, and you come down, and from what I measured, that 32 to 72 would come up to the to the tree line, and then go up, and the people would maintain. The city workers wouldn't even have to get on that property; they just yeah, come up. I'm about on up beyond that. I have no idea. That's that doesn't have anything to do with this little piece of strip. Right. Because it's just directly behind the house. That's up to Mike and whomever, <laughs> Greg, Greg's department, whomever. But are you wanting to move <laughs> the fence line? No. All no. I'm wanting is use of that property land. Okay. It's a possible lease to that 32 by 72 strip of property that's directly behind the house 
that would stay right in the fence line that's already there from the neighbors for them to be able to put a storage building and a dog pen on. And, but lease it so it's all legal and they would maintain the property. And the, you know, would like a number of your lease for whatever amount you guys would come up with. I do not want them to put. People. I'm sorry. To yes, sir. Lease to those people, to the people buying the property. I don't know when to make a decision on that right now, but I would suggest that somebody go out. I'll go out and look at it and make sure that. I would be delighted to take you up there, go with anybody, or you can go on your own. Just let me know and try to answer any more questions you can have. It's really a very simple layout got to do with one. You regular don't have to do with all. Mike, huh. these buildings that are shown on here, do you know, I mean, who uses them? You know, you would say, have you looked at this picture? Well, I had, well, I looked at the picture. Basically, they're, they're, the buildings that's been there for years, there we've always kind of to kind of maintain that area in there. Which just even when I took it over, we just kind of moved up to that one of those buildings. But they're not there. our buildings. They're not our buildings now. Well, the city can't lose by adverse possession, but it looks to me like you've got some other property that's being used on a regular basis. Is that property of any use? No. It's sloped and you know, some of it has to be trimmed by hand. You can't actually get down get down into it with a mold. Rocky, the, the strip I'm talking about actually goes to the tree line and, and it, there's nothing on it now. Well, I, I yeah. Your way. <coughs> <coughs> they were out there. Well, oh, we're looking at it and we've got folks that clearly have encroached. It looks like at the top there you got somebody that may own two lots or there's a house and an empty lot. It looks like. At least part of that roof hangs over into the city property and there's some property behind it. It might be a good time to clean some of that up. Well, that, we just didn't want to do what we thought that we had seen others do, so that's why we came to you for permission to do that. <coughs> and by cleaning up, I mean, unless the city's got some use to it, declare it surplus and add it on those lines. Well, we can't vacate it. I mean, it we got to clear it surplus, and, but I doubt it's got any fair market value on its own. I mean, it might be valuable to folks in front, but you could sell it for something normal. I, I would request that if you guys can address that, I would like to know, because we have a contract on these folks' property, and I either need to, and they're not going to use the property without permission, uh, so I either need to... Uh, pursue another piece of property to put them in or to try to move this forward so we can do something. There, I would love to know by the end of this week if I possibly could. I, you so, don't have to come back and have city action. We're going to have to clear it surplus and then get rid of it. Whatever we do, it's not going to happen by the end of the week. Okay. What? Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe it could two maybe two weeks from today. All right. And like I said, what we were asking for is just a, a lease for so much a year. Whatever you guys come up with. It, it, the lease that you have to declare it surplus. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. So I can maybe say in two weeks, then I can... We should be able to have an answer to that one lease in two weeks, but you need to take a look at what you're going to do with all of that stuff. Okay. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody, any of the department heads have any... Anything? I've got a couple of things. Uh, lately, there's been a lot of talk about the GPS being wrong, sending people in the wrong direction, and all that. My wife and I found last night that if you go to gps.gov, they got a whole list of what to send in to get that changed. And uh, the way it sounds, the more people that send it in, the better you are to get it changed. So if y'all get on there and say 14th Street ends, then that would save police, fire, and that's a lot of problems with trucks going up 14th Street to a dead end. But uh, I, I got on it today and went in and put that it was closed in that one corner. So if we get enough of those, they, they'll change on the GPS. Or so they're saying. Uh, GPS.gov. Well, .gov. Uh, one other thing, or a couple of things. On the sewer rehab, 
uh, the contractor don't want to come back, it's going to cost them a lot of money. They got uh, $35 a foot for what they're planning on doing. They told us we could take their money and buy piping, which would be five dollars a foot, so we can use we can get five times as much piping in. So they're going to allow us to do that. The only thing is, it's going to extend it on another about another two or three weeks. But we'll have a lot more new pipe than what we intended to have originally. Uh, and then on the, our dozer, I put on the, that paperwork. It, it's broke down. Uh, we got it back to where we could sell it now. If there, if we got any projects coming up, like the tennis courts at the, uh, I'm not sure what their time frame is for the high school, and then the Eccles Drive, if we're going to do that project, we probably would need to look at least a home for a dozer if, if that's acceptable by everybody. Uh, but we've got some time to look at it. But I think if we're planning on doing those projects, that would be our best route to go. And we were talking about on the uh, tennis court, maybe roughly with them, like I said, they winter. Yeah. And then they come back next year for the things. So. Yeah, we, we really <coughs> need a dozer to do that <coughs> because of the way that it's got feel in it. Right. Uh, but if, if it, they're not in that big of a hurry about it. Mr. Cunningham called today, but I haven't called <coughs> today, so. okay. And that's all I have. So, <coughs> I know this is a Christmas tree in the park's got some brown on it. We started back to watering that. Yeah, it's always been watered. It's still, just still running. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> about 20% of the fine family in the Cab County yeah, are dying. Really? I got so to it the house. The drought shouldn't have affected that one because it's been watered all year, but it, there's something happening. Uh, Green Road up around Fisher was one we were talking about the other day. Yeah. Not really bad. It's, he talked about that, but. You well, it. that we did, and they, he puts, he breaks all his leaves into it, so he stops at the ditch, and we told him not to, but it still happens, so he's created that problem for himself. But we have a lot of that. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Great. Um, it's in the process of trying to get the two swimming pools ready, we pulled the covers off and started um, the, uh, Treatment of the water will uh, drain and high pressure water so we can see the pool will probably start next week. We did get the chiller set yesterday at the rec center. Um, appreciate all the cooperation from everyone. So hopefully we're going to have air conditioning back at the rec center starting tomorrow. They're plumbing it all in and um, getting the electrical stuff worked out. We do have the Kiwanis Club, Optimus Club, uh, special needs playground dedication this weekend. I know that both are planning on being there and to have the ribbon cutting and actually Tamara's the president and uh, the ribbon cutting will be at 10 and the radio remote will start at 9. We did not get to open the splash pad yesterday. Uh, we're still finishing up the, uh, the Tiki Hut uh, guard, the attendance shack and we had some uh, construction materials on the deck but we should open it today and uh, have everything ready to go for Saturday. That's the business unless anybody's got any questions. Any other departments? I will uh, call your attention to uh, the proposed Plans. amendments to the zoning ordinance that I put in each of the boxes this morning. Hopefully, you have a chance to kind of read over those and see what we're trying to do. And um, I would like to get permission to put this in the newspaper so that they can publish the changes and, and uh, <coughs> we can have the public, any public input that might be. Thank you, Jim. If you don't have any questions, I'll be glad to have you. We need to look, Jimmy, at the possible addition of that area we talked about yesterday before we actually take action on that, increasing the overlay. That's up to you guys. Okay. What we talked about, you, you remember the, the overlay that went from like Basin Gap to the south end of town and from, I think, Lincoln Avenue up to Forest Avenue. What we've discovered in the last week or so is that there's quite a bit of property from Forest Avenue up on the side of the ridge that would ideally be suited for some of these garden homes and smaller houses. So we might want to look at increasing 
that overlay up the side of the ridge before we actually adopt that. Right now, as it sits, we can um, add, can't we? Yes. Um, if you want to change the, the overlay to expand up to the ridge, we can name a street up there at the top of the ridge, if you wish, and, and say it's going along that particular line. No, but if there's <coughs> property that's not in that. Anybody that's not in this particular overlay can still come before the BCA at any time. It's only more of adjustments and request uh, their property be looked at as potentially one of these uh, smaller developments. Okay. There is a fee for that, but they can still come before that. I think if they do that, they'd have to pay like a $100 fee That's each right. time, wouldn't it? That's so, But if I we went ahead and incorporated... I agree the ridge. Yeah, we incorporated this in. Small it would say that. Yeah, there's that, a lot of those lots were laid out in 50 foot increments up through there back in the 50s and 40s when all that subdivisions were added. Everybody that put in 10 more houses got a subdivision named after them and they, they went as narrow as they could. I grew up on a 40 foot lot, <laughs> but it sure was deep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a deep thinker. Uh, right, and that's the beauty of it. The planning commission did a good job of bringing this to us, but we can we can add to their recommendations. And I think they were a little hesitant to just do the whole thing there because of the slope up there. But I think it'd be best interest to incorporate it into the ordinance when we do it. Right. <clears throat> we can suspend the rules next meeting and do that if we need to. Get, I've had some builders. Tell me they're kind of excited about the potential of coming down here and building some smaller homes and see what the market would bear. And I think the market's there, isn't it, Rita? Yes. I, I, I'm kind of excited downtown may come back with these smaller, newer homes. Jimmy, how about the house over on Rucker, the Rucker Street? That um, just passed off a piece of material to go to the owner today. And... Uh, after that's presented, I have it signed back in my office. Then we'll request uh, utilities figures this time. Sure. Should be by the end of the week. Yeah. Uh, I've been approached by two or three people concerning basketball goals. Uh, and I know we talked about uh, doing something down at Spring Grove. I don't know how we really stand on that from a monetary standpoint. Probably next year. But, uh, most of the folks that I've talked to is wanting something back at City Park, even if it's just one goal that uh, some of the kids could could play while they were at Third Saturday or you know some of the other events going on. Uh, just wondering what everybody thought about it. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. In fact, I wouldn't even change the lights or anything. Why was it taken down? Bus trouble. Originally tennis courts. They were tennis courts. Basketball goals on yeah. either side. And so it was a multi-purpose facility, but it turned into a multi-purpose hangout. Yeah. yeah. It's been years since it's been down. It's a problem. at a certain time, right? Or no? If you, if you don't have any lights, well, that's that close. That close. Yeah. I think it is worth looking into and, and giving <coughs> that option down there. All right. Looks like it's 12 o'clock. We'll go ahead and uh, get started with our council meeting. I've asked uh, school resource officer Matt Wilson to come and open us up in prayer. So, Matt, if you would come. Thank you for this day, Lord, this gathering. God, we all need your wisdom no matter what position we hold. So, Father, we ask you today, Lord, that 
these leaders, God, that they would listen to you and your Holy Spirit, Father. And God, you'd help us all to complete our goal in life and our purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Place flag, salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everybody to our council meeting today. Uh, good to see this good number out. Uh, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from the last council? Motion to approve. Hey, we got a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. We already had a motion, so. Okay, Johnny second. Johnny second. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Okay. Ordinances and resolutions. Uh, resolution 2017-24 declaring certain recreation department air conditioner items as surplus. Greg mentioned this a moment ago. Uh, he had the chiller replaced that we've talked about for a couple of years now. Scrap value of that thing is approximately $700 to $800. Uh, he had an offer from a company called Industrial Solutions to purchase it for $2,200. Good job. I second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Next is resolution 2017-25, authorizing an agreement with the Alabama Department of Transportation to make improvements and extensions to Eccles Drive. Second. Got a motion and a second. Now is this, uh, how much is the state? Are they going to pay for all the upgrade on that, or how much they put a dollar figure on it? Or? All but the engineering. State is going to do everything with the engineering. You get a second. Yeah, we got a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. All right. Resolution 2017-26, accepting low bid for the landfill scraper pan repair. The bid. We sent out bids uh, April 19th. They were due in uh, yesterday. Sent out three bids, only got one response. That one response was from Thompson Tractor Company for $16,470. It's my understanding that, uh, that we'll award the bid today, then it uh, should be repaired within 30 days. And uh, I'll make a motion to second. We've got a motion and a second. All in, uh, any, any, all in favor say aye. Uh, my tongue tied up here. Too. <laughs> yeah, anybody else too? <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. All right. Resolution 2017-27, accepting low bid for the plant mix and vendor. Again, uh, bids were mailed out on April the 19th, due in yesterday. Uh, three bids sent out, only one response. That response was from Wiregrass. Uh, fifty-five ninety-five per ton for binder, fifty-nine ninety-five for plant mix. That's seventy cents a ton greater than last year. What was the binder? Fifty-five ninety-five. And that's also seven. Yeah, both of them were seventy cents more per ton this year than last year. Is that about to go in price, Tim? Sir. Is that about the correct price? Yeah, it was 62 four years ago. It's been coming down since then. So I think it's down because of fuel prices, but I think that's our best bet as far as hauling and everything. I, I make the most of them accept this bid. Yeah, we, we haul it. But, they, yeah, uh, but it's closer yeah. also. Oh, yeah. It's only bid and they're pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make a motion. We've got a motion to accept in a second. There's nothing about this bid that requires us to buy it there if he finds a better price. They just agreed to be bound to sell it. Right, right. Yeah. Bound by the price. Right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carried. A new business. Discuss about replacing the air conditioning unit at the senior center building. 
I was approached oh, about a month ago by Craig Sheldon from the Cab County Commission's office. We have an agreement with the county. We own the senior building, but they maintain it. And there was some ambiguity in the language of the contract. Rocky and I looked at it about what entails upkeep and maintenance. Craig said it's beyond maintenance, that it needed to be replaced, and he brought a quote from Bryant's Heating and Cooling, which I included in your packet. Uh, but Rocky's looked at it, and we're of the opinion we don't even have a contract with them. It's expired in 09, I believe, wasn't it, Rocky? Somewhere around that time, yes. But at this point, <coughs> it's just, it's sort of, my law renews once a year because we keep accepting the dollar if they actually send it. And they keep maintaining it. Utilities are paid by who? Them. They're paying the utilities. Well, what our out-of-pocket cost is on that building is carried on our insurance roll. You know what that roughly cost is? I have broke it out. I have to, have to go into the policy and break out that individual piece. But uh, and Basically, we don't, as I understand it, we don't use the building at all with the exception of holding city elections there. And how much is the, the a uh, six? He's got, he's got a quote in here from Bryant's for two for two different units. He's got a Lennox and a Dockin. Both of them eighty six ninety five. But uh, I'm sure if we're going to replace the air conditioner, we'll want to get our own quote. I see no reason since we don't use it. I see no reason why we need to. Own it. I don't. I think we'll just give it to the county and let them do what they want to it. How did the city come about owning that building? I, I don't know. It, it, it predates me, and there's not much in this world that does. <laughs> but, but it does. Uh, and uh, three-way joint city venture. City built to start it. with. City built. I think yeah, the city built it, and we were we had some use of it, and then the, the senior said it was there, and then whatever use we had, basically, I, I don't have any clue what it was, but. Uh, it's built, it's built on the city property up there, but I mean, if you, if that's what the council wanted to do, all you, of course, they'd have to agree to accept it. Uh, but we could easily give it to them with some provision that we retain the right to hold city elections there. Uh, and uh, if we give it to, if we give it to them, can they then change the use of it though? Give it to them; it's theirs. But. You know, I don't know what else they'd use it for. So everything presently in there now is county operation. That's what, we, we don't do anything in it. It's except care, pay except, tax on it. Well, we're exempt from taxes well, primarily. Insurance. We, pay in, we pay the insurance, and then now this has arisen as to whether this is maintenance or repair. And, and, I, and, and I'll be honest with you, it's sort of in a gray area. I mean... You know, I think if the roof blew off, that would pretty be pretty obvious. That was a little past maintenance and repair. Uh, but uh, uh, there's some question about whether we're we're obligated to spend this eight thousand dollars or not, or whether they're obligated to. And if you just gave it to them to reserve the right, then that wouldn't be an issue anymore. Uh, there may be some negatives to it, I, I guess. Uh, but you wouldn't want to do anything but give them. The footprint of the building and probably the parking area up there. And I'm sure we probably maintain the parking area too, Tim? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, we do we mow it and all that stuff? No, we don't. Okay. Just the park portion. Yeah, the park portion. Is the completely out or they just want to need it? I don't know, Johnny. He, he said he, he had repaired it over and over. I think it's 23 years old. <laughs> And it's they nice got repair. more than one unit in there. That's well, there's three, three units. units. I think he said there's three units in that entire building with this particular one it's for the upstairs. So they have been paying to have it re yeah. the unit yeah. repaired? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess they need to have it replaced then, too, wouldn't you think? Well, the wording in that contract is they're responsible for the upkeep and maintenance, and that's what Rocky's saying the gray area uh, is. Uh, well, I, actually, as we look at the contract, I don't have it in front of me right now. I think Andy and I both thought that 
if you looked at that contract that neither one of us was our first reaction, this is their job. I think most, both of us, don't you agree with that, Andy, that this would fall into something that we should do under the contract, which the contract's not binding anymore. But the question then became, why, why do we need the building at all if we're not using it at all? And because if there's repairs starting to happen, uh, they're going to continue to happen. So it was an asset on our books, and yes. how much is it valued at? That's a pretty good size building, but it's a good building. Yeah. My only concern would be is what if they come in here two years later and totally change the use of the building and we have right. no control. And that's my only reservation about that. And I don't think it'd be anything detrimental to Fort Payne, but I, I just, you know, it's, it's been used for pretty much the same thing for several years. And well, everything in it's a county operation. They'd have to put it somewhere. I mean, it's either that or just cancel all of them entirely, and I don't think it's <coughs> Didn't they move the thing from up here to Beast Gap yeah, down there? I, think, oh, I don't land. think they have any lunches up at the other place anymore. It's a nutrition down there. They moved it. They moved the nutrition thing down the there. The, and put the clothes the closet the, bill up They there. had a, some kind of indigent type agency in the right. basement. They just swapped. Casa or something? Yeah. Like yeah. Something and like they flip flopped them yeah. on Beast and Gap apartments. So, Al Abson, just given the county a building, I'd recommend, and I think Rocky would agree, that that contract be re redone. Well, we I need guess to, the least we got to do yeah, is I restructure the contract. And like I say, they got three units. So here's one. When's the next one? And then the next one's going to come up. Well, I might do a little more study. Yeah, I, I got But I, I think the only push, I think we've got plenty of time on, on some sort of agreement. I think the only push at this point is it's getting warm weather. It's getting it's fixing to get hot. And let me speak from personal experience. Old folks don't like heat. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if, if we're and, and I don't doubt that these are good quotes, but I think we would need to be diligent. If we're going to have to buy units, we need yeah. to get we need, we need to bid, all we need three bids submitted. And and these are basically good quotes. But if, if we're going to pay for it, I think we got to bid it out. That right, lawyer? No, you don't have to bid it out. No, you don't have to bid it out. But I would, I would we think that to. we would want to, uh, to get our own quotes. I, 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 I think the initial question you want to answer is, are we going to replace that unit and then go negotiate with them, or are we going to take the position? And then, I think you can do either one you want to. Uh, but uh, if if we're if we make to take the position that we're going to replace that unit then I think it's incumbent upon us to decide who to use and what's a fair price, etc. I'd like to have the other two checked, see what their prognosis is too. I mean, if we're looking at a year or two down the road, another one, and are, you know, are they all the same age? Because if they are, we know they're all going to wear out about the same time. So, Well, we could go ahead and do this one and redo the contract and spell out what's going to happen the next time this comes up, because you know if we got three, Right. The other two is going to be shortly behind, right. uh, and there may be some other things in there too that that the contract. Uh, I think we could be on a good faith standpoint, of, and I think we can get it cheaper than this price that that we've got. Feel fairly confident about that. Well, I mean, if the contract's not been renegotiated, you know, I think now it's time to do that. Well, if if, if y'all want me to, I'll go ahead and redraft and make some changes to that contract. And then maybe by the next meeting we could present something to them. And y'all could think about whether or not you want to uh, go ahead and, or maybe we go ahead and get some prices and then decide whether or not to replace it. And if you're going to replace it, then say, we're going to replace it, but here's the next contract that we need to enter into. I think we get prices point. on this one and a and good check on the other two, see if there's other, any other maintenance issues that are pending. And then that gives us a little bit of. Well, my plan on redoing it was to make it yeah. where it was pretty darn clear that it didn't matter. Right. So worst case scenario, we'd replace this unit and then they'd have to replace anything other if we redo this contract, right? Yeah. Or we give them the building and... But what it costs to fix yeah. the air conditioner. Right. Yeah. <laughs>
what does a uh, normal commercial lease include when when you're talking about air conditioning and heat? Usually, major things such as the heating and air, uh, the roof and the walls are maintained by the lessor, oh. and then the lessee maintains the interior. And I mean, that's not a hard and fast rule. There's a lot of different uh, <coughs> negotiations uh, that go on with that, but generally speaking, major major structural items are maintained by the landlord and uh, the interior and things of that nature are maintained by the town. Okay. All right, we'll get prices and uh, you work on the contract and we'll decide something by next council meeting. Get it next two weeks. All right, got activities permit. Uh, Daughters of the American Revolution Patriotic Concert at the Rotary Pavilion on Friday, June the 30th from 5 until 9 p.m. Randy, you okay with that? Okay. Got a motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. All right. Uh, that gets all of our agenda items. Mayor, you got anything? A uh, couple of things. <clears throat> Veterans Day Parade, we finally settled on a date and time that the military band can be here. Uh, we're hoping that we can get a flyover from some of the uh, military. So we've set it for Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, had conflicts with the VFW and the, and the Marines on Saturday, so this looks like our best. What is that date, Mayor? What's the date? That's November the 10th. November 10th. Number 10. The other thing I wanted to mention, and, and Rocky and I have talked about it uh, a good bit. Before I leave this place, there's two things that I'd like to get done, if at all possible. And one of them is to get rid of that MAPCO station. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm tired of waiting on them. Uh, I checked the uh, tax records as to what they were appraised for. I talked to a local appraiser to give me the, what he considered the, the value of it to be uh, based on property that he had bought recently. And it appears that our price that we give them is a above market price. I would like to have the okay to go ahead and get a certified appraiser, an out-of-town appraiser, to come in and appraise that property to see if it's feasible to go through condemnation process. Uh, Rocky can tell us how much, what that amounts to. But well, one of the first things you're required to do if you decide to condemn property uh, is, to, is to present the landowner with an appraisal. Uh, and there's people that pretty much specialize in those kinds of appraisals. Uh, and I would, uh, that, that getting the appraisal does not obligate you to condemn the property. It doesn't obligate you to do anything. You're going to spend probably $2,500 to $3,000 getting the appraisal. Um, but I would recommend that you, if, if that's a thought that you want to have, is uh, that you start the process, get the property appraised, um, go, and, and then notify them that that's being considered and may want to have one of two effects. It either may, uh, we may decide we're going to condemn it or they may decide that they want to get off um, their rear and get the deal that we already made done. Um, although they never did reduce that deal to writing so we don't have anything enforceable uh, at this point in time. Um, but I, I, if that would just be a first step, and then I guess and the only other thing would to declare portions around it Mexico and just build us a wall around it. Let them pay for it. Uh, well, I, I was under the impression that we had a verbal agreement. We, we had a verbal agreement, but a verbal agreement on, I, I, is, I on land isn't enforceable. We do. We have one. And we have drafts, and we've sent it back three or four times with changes that we wanted in the drafts. And then at some point during that process, uh, the ownership of MAPCO changed. Changed. And, right. uh, and, the, and the people that we were dealing with 
uh, have been deported or disappeared or something, and uh, I, they're gone. Or gone in hiding. Gone yeah. in hiding, yeah, Regardless, whatever. Regardless, can we not open a dialogue with the people that... We've been trying. We have been trying for, what, since January uh, to find somebody down there that will talk to us. Uh, we've asked uh, Jimmy Roch, uh, who put us in with the people and was uh, involved in the sale, we've asked him initially, and then he was involved with the sale between the businesses, as I understand it. We've asked him to talk to the people he knows there and get us someone to talk to, and, and the only response we've ever had, to, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Tamara, is basically we may get around to it at some point, but at this point we're too busy doing the other things it takes to to, to put this overall deal together. So we have tried very hard to talk to them and have to open up some dialogue with them, but we just can't get anybody to talk to us. And I think the first thing was said was wait till after the first of the year, I believe. They and then it's Everybody's committed to uh, to get rid of getting rid of that high sore that's down there next to the park. Uh, that uh, you go ahead and you're not beginning the process of condemnation. What you're doing is doing what you would have to do, and it also gives you a pretty good idea. I mean, let's if if you're looking at what the mayor's been told by um, a realtor here in town and what. Uh, the tax assessor shows, because that's usually low for commercial property. Uh, it may be that you can condemn it and get it for less money. Um, and uh, but you're not committing to do anything. And then I think when you, when they understand that we're going to make, that we're going to continue down this path, with or without their cooperation, then you have uh, the opportunity. It, it may, they may deem it more beneficial to reopen this conversation than they are at this point. Uh, because at this point, they, they just truly, uh, they just don't want to mess with us at this point. It's just not important to them. And so, um, I, that, my suggestion is that you authorize the employment of the appraiser, see what it's worth, and, and then at that point, um, hopefully they'll, even seeing the newspaper article to get their attention and we'll start having some dialogue with them again. And, and two, you, you don't know what they really got on their mind, but I know when we first started talking with them, they were trying to find a uh, someone that would buy that station that would continue to buy fuel from them. That's when we got involved in it because we knew if it changed hands, it'd just make it that much harder to, to handle. So, Missed the motion in second term, Mayor. I second it. Got a motion to second. Uh, All in uh, favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the one other thing <laughs> that I'd like to get a on a roll. And I don't know whether I will or not. <laughs> but it's the, it's the old hospital. And we are uh, we're still working with ADM and EPA. Uh, uh, ADM is in the process of doing the second phase. Uh, EPA has to take the things that they find in the second phase and run them through their lab and do lab work and all this stuff. <coughs> so it's a long drawn out process. But uh, hopefully uh, if you can maintain cooperation between ADM, EPA, and HUD, which right now is kind of backing it, uh, we stand a good chance of getting it done. It may be three or four years down the road. 
I'd love to get that at least started before I leave office. We're going to spray that or anything that's looking pretty ragged right we now. Had, we sprayed it one time. We need to do it again, I guess. We haven't sprayed it. Yeah, it, sprayed it, it needs it. <clears throat> yeah. at, at what point are we going to have to fence that, Mayor? When, uh, when EPA agrees that uh, it's a brownfield site and agrees to uh, start sharing the expense, they won't. They'll tell us verbally what they're going to do, but they won't actually do anything until it becomes our property. And once it becomes our property, we're going to have to fence it. I, mean, I don't see any way around. If we do that, I'd like to get us coordinated with Parks and Rec and everybody else. Let's buy a fence to put around that that we can take down and use somewhere else because I don't see us buying stuff twice. <coughs> and uh, we're going to fence it when they do it good and get some stuff that we can use somewhere else like the soccer fields that need replacing or some of those other places. Is there any indication on how long it will take for that phase two to get started? Or? Be, no, it's started, but it'll be the end of the year before it's done. And a lot of that depends on EPA. I mean, ADM will be finished before the, the, the EPA will get through with their part. We don't know. That's one we don't want to condemn without the government help no. us, because we can't afford to clean that thing up without federal help. It costs too much to help. take that thing. Right. I will say this. I it's going to make a nice <laughs> lot in one of these days <laughs> yep. that can be developed for something right, right there in the middle of town. Yeah. All right, thank you. Anything else, Mayor? All right. Uh, again, I'd like to say, appreciate everybody coming out today. Uh, anybody in the audience uh, like to uh, address the council? I'd recognize Mr. Mike Shari back there. Yeah, I started to say it's good to have our new uh, Improvement Authority Director. So you got a speech? No speeches today. <laughs> <laughs> Next time? Only one appropriate. <laughs> All the power is on, right? Yeah, the lights are burning pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, I would also like to say it's good to see three, I know there's three leadership uh, DeKalb students here today. Uh, this is part of their uh, curriculum, actually four. Uh, we have Bradley here every, every uh, council meeting. But this is part of the leadership DeKalb, pro and, and Mari's here, that's five. So... Um, if I keep looking, we might have, have more. But uh, that's part of the leadership uh, requirement to, to attend a, uh, some type of a city function, council meeting. Um, and if you know anybody that would like to go through leadership to cab, um, applications are being accepted till June the 1st. So anybody in the audience want to address us? Not? Before we adjourn, I'd like to say I appreciate the nearly 10 long years of service we got out of Tim Harris. He's leaving us this week, and I wish him luck in his new job as the Main Street Director. So Tim's done a great job for us uh, as a city employee, and, and if he's as dedicated to his new job as he was old in Main Street, he'd probably fix and take off. Yeah, I think Main Street will made an excellent choice. see some leaps and bounds. No further business, I'd like to motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank uh -huh.